Okay, folks, we'll make a start. You're very welcome to uh, this webinar this afternoon. And today the focus is obviously on the PGCE uh, and School of Education, our postgraduate program, and looking at post-primary in particular, although I, I do have some information on primary as well. If there are any questions and you want to pop them in the chat as we go through, uh, we have another presenter on, Maria Davidson is on with me, a colleague of mine. Maria is a course director for the PGC in Home Economics. I am the course director for the PGC in Physical Education, but also currently the PGC coordinator for the post-primary course. So if you, if you want to come on, actually just ask questions as it's going on, I, I'm free to answer them. But if you have something you want to pop in the chat, Maria will do her best to get to answer um, as we go along. Okay, and anything we miss, we can we can wrap it up at the end. So PGC and post primary. These opening slides are just a number of slides that are generic to the university in terms of obviously trying to encourage you and give you an idea of what it means or the benefits to be studying at UU. Okay, and I'll let you you can read them for your for yourself. I suppose for us, we would like to think the one thing that we take out of that from in relation to our courses that are taught by experts, every single one of the PGCE post-primary team here at, at Ulster have considerable experience uh, teaching in the post-primary sector and have moved on then into initial teacher education. So uh, if you were to study your postgraduate uh, PGCE, P or PGCE course with us here at, at Ulster, you will be in very safe hands uh, and a team that are extremely committed uh, to, to student progression and, and satisfaction. So some quantifiable benefits there, obviously it's just giving you some idea on the stats in terms of, you know, when you get to postgraduate level in terms of the earnings. I will talk more specifically about uh, salary rates and teaching later on in a few number of slides. So that's going to be more specific to you in that context. Okay, and then I suppose applying for the course here uh, at, our, at our Coleraine campus, that's one thing to emphasize. Sometimes there's a little bit of confusion, but the PGCE primary and post-primary courses are at the Coleraine campus. Uh, some of the courses uh, in the past were based at Jordanstown, but all the courses have now been moved to Coleraine. So you apply simply online. It's not through UCAS. We get a lot of emails and confusion about uh, applying through UCAS. If you're applying for postgraduate uh, PGCEs, say in England, Scotland, they have a different uh, application process. So you need to be aware of that. You simply apply online, go to Ulster, online at ulster.ac.uk, and it'll give you a, a link for applications. And it's you'll then scroll and search for the PGCE particular course that you wish, and you, and you take it from there. If you have any queries or, or concerns with that, please do not hesitate uh, to give myself an email or admissions an email. My email is p.mcflynn at ulster.ac.uk. And or also you can you're free to contact the admissions team and someone will direct you if you have any difficulties with that. So you'll see there there are no official closing date for most courses, but you'll see that I have been in red, but that's generic when they're talking about postgraduate courses. We do have a closing date for PGCE. So uh, for the primary course, the closing date is, is generally mid-November, and for the post-primary course, ours will be early January. Okay, so I don't think there's a specific date set as of yet because of the, of the new term about to kick in, but applications generally open for the post-primary course in early October, and they will close in early January. Okay, so you need to be aware of that. And once you go past the closing date, um, we do not accept late applications unless a course has been kept open. And if you were applying for a particular course that was maybe didn't have the numbers that it thought it might have at a particular point, they will keep that course open. But by and large, most courses will close on that date, which is early January. And I'm talking about early January. It will be 3rd, 4th, 5th of January. It will not go beyond the first week of January. So my advice is if you're thinking of applying for the following year is to get your application in early all right and not wait to lastminute.com get it in at least pre-christmas okay so 
And again, fully applications must be fully completed. All right, uh, because that's a case is if you're applying for a job, or whatever, um, and you don't fully complete your application, it can just go in the bin. It can be disregarded, and you could be one of the best candidates ever. So you've got to fully complete that form. Fees and finance. Now, in terms, of this will be generic as well, and I think sometimes uh, for the post PGCE and post primary, um, the fees just aren't as dear as that. They are, I think, in the region of four thousand pound. Uh, give or take a few pounds. I'm not entirely sure. It used to be three thousand nine hundred and something. I think it has moved to maybe four thousand, but it's not even as much as four thousand one hundred. It's around that uh, four thousand bracket. Okay. So why teach? All right. And as I say, July and August simply won't be enough. Okay. My wife is a, a primary school teacher. She's about to go back, and she's had a great summer, and she's talking about getting the motivation to, to go back. And that's what it is. All right, you've got to want a lot of people that come to us and apply. And what we're looking for as well in that application process is a passion for teaching and a desire to teach. All right. And unfortunately, some people do venture into teaching just sort of not, more or less as an afterthought because they haven't really thought of anything else that, that, that motivates them. So I'll, I'll simply teach. That will not be enough. July and August is nice, but believe you me, you need your July and August to recharge the batteries. When you've been through a full year's teaching, and particularly the, as the years progress, the conditions in which your teachers are working. And that's not just COVID related, that's pre COVID times in terms of the extra workload and the extra duties that teachers now have to uh, carry out and conduct on a daily basis. Teachers change lives. I always say to my PGCE students, you know, it's a very, very important job, but there are times when it's not a life or death. Uh, situation. So when I'm trying to manage students' expectations, their stress and anxiety, I say to them, look, you're never, you're not saving lives, but you are changing lives and you're shaping lives. And you look back to the teachers that are the biggest impact on you. You can look back to those teachers that are really positive, uh, made a positive impression on you and helped develop you are as a person. We all have them. But likewise, we also have those teachers that perhaps we would not want to model ourselves on. So it's a very, very important job. And you have a real chance and opportunity to interact with young people, young people who can keep you young and fresh and full of motivation, but only if you are interested in working with children. I taught myself, uh, as I say, in post primary school, and sometimes I looked at some teachers and wondered, you know, did they actually like children? All right? Because this is not the job for you if you do not have a real passion for working with children. And not just working with children who you think always will do what you tell them, that's that's not it. Unfortunately, in society, we're dealing with children who are coming to our classrooms with lots of issues and lots of concerns and things that are going on with them outside their lives. And they bring that to the classroom. And you've got to be prepared to have the patience and the desire and the motivation to want to deal with that. So it's a very important job. And we would not be in this role of initial teacher education if we did not believe that ourselves. So pathways to becoming a teacher in Northern Ireland. I think this is very important. Some of you may be aware of this, some of you may not, because we get lots of emails around this. And one of the things I suppose is that we are, we're asked about PTC can do it part-time. You cannot do it part-time. It is a full-time course. Okay, and we'll break the weeks down later. Uh, but it's a full-time course, so you can't study it part-time. So you can't work and do it in the evening, etc. It's a full-time course, a very, very demanding course. Other pathways, so you get people who leave school um, or their FE and they want to be a teacher and they go straight to Stranmullis or St Mary's and they do their Bachelor of Education, which is a four year degree. Now, both those institutions mainly cater for primary school teachers, but um, there are a small number of secondary subjects and you can see them listed there RE, Technology and Design, Business Studies, Math, Stroke, Science, but the rest are generally in primary. So they will do four years of that and then they emerge as a qualified teacher. The other pathway, which is our pathway, is that students will undertake an undergraduate degree and then they will come to us uh, and complete their one year of PGCE. Okay. As I say, we have primary and secondary. All right. And those PGCE subjects are shared between ourselves and Queen's. All right. So Queen's University as well also offer the PGCE. They do not do the B.Ed. 
The BA ed can only be done in Stromulus and St Mary's. Ourselves at Ulster and Queen's will offer uh, the PGCE in post-primary. Okay. So even advising people what's the best route if you're not sure at 18, you know, it is better to keep your options open and in a, in a particular degree area or a subject and it's given you greater or broader options beyond teaching whereas if you get into your B ed early on it's, it's it's only teaching that you can do okay so as i said between ourselves queens and ulster the only one you'll see as an overlap there is english so queens do straight english pgce but we do english and drama we actually do there's another component that's english drama and media okay so you will see along the right hand side our subjects art and design english drama and media geography history home economics music physical education technology and design those are the eight post-primary or secondary subjects as we call them and then we have primary and primary have 33 places on their pgce between the eight subjects that we have we have 80 places so you do the maths that's generally 10 places per subject so 10 in art, 10 in English, drama and media, geography, 10 in geography, 10 in history, and so on. Now, it's highlighted in red. We do have four additional IME places, which is Irish medium education places. All right. Now, being honest, it's a it's an area that we find it difficult to recruit for. I actually am in, I wouldn't say in charge, but I am responsible uh, for keeping an eye on IME applications. And this year we have recruited two. So it is a difficult, it's difficult to recruit the IME places because to, for IME, you what we're looking for is someone to teach art and design through the medium of Irish, teach English, drama and media through the medium of Irish. Now, the course that you come onto, you will study the exact same course as everybody else. The only difference if you do the IME route is that you will do your second placement in an Irish medium school okay that's the only difference you will also have to attend some cpd in irish so extra courses at weekends and evenings now for the criteria for an ime place is if you you must have a degree that's at least 50 percent relevant to what to the subject that you're applying for so if you wanted to teach geography through the medium of irish you must have a degree that's at least 50 percent geography but you must also have Irish qualification to at least A level or leaving cert level. So you don't have to have it to degree level. And I know this sometimes can put a lot of people off and that they think perhaps their Irish is not good enough, but that's the entry criteria. A level Irish or leaving cert as a minimum. Obviously, if you've got higher than that, that's that's even better. Okay. So any questions or queries around any of the subjects there? on the IME or, or any queries at this stage. If you, even if you want to ask me now, I can answer it. Uh, if not, you want to put it into the chat. No, okay, I'll move on. And I'll say, why am I telling you this now? So if we have some people who are, are, are is that, who don't know about the roots and the different subjects, it's important to be aware of what that process is because some people come to us and they say they want to do a, a PGC, but they find out that their degree is not relevant. Okay. So if you opt for a PGC route into teaching, you think about choosing an undergraduate degree that is accepted as a valid curriculum area. For instance, we do not accept law and psychology. All right. To gain entry to a PGC course, 50% of your degree has to be in the subject you're applying for. For example, if you come out of university with a degree in history and politics, then at least 50% of your degree has to be in history. You would not be considered for a PGCE if your degree comprised 60% politics and 40% history. Now, there are ways around that. I don't mean that there's as a way around it. There's a way of, if you were in the, say the example I we have given there, 60% politics and 40% history, and you really wanted to do PGCE history, you can then go on and take additional modules if you like. So for example, if you were 60, 40, we would look at the prospect of you undertaking some master's modules in history to get you up over that 50% bracket. There are some people who apply to my own subject of physical education. They maybe have done a degree in communications, advertising, and marketing. 
I had one subject student in the past. That degree is not in any way related to PE. That student went on and did a master's in sports science. Therefore, a master's degree will supersede your undergraduate degree. So if you can have a master's degree that's at least 50% relevant to your subject, then you can apply. So it doesn't mean that the door is shut in that regard if you find yourself with an undergraduate degree uh, that's not relevant. Okay. I'm just using technology and design as an example here, but this is applicable to, you know, we're talking about here, it's one that is an exception <coughs> to the rule in that because technology and design by the nature of the subject and the way it, and you know yourself, the pace of technology and the way it develops, all right, um, there are a few exceptions in that technology and design will accept degrees in engineering either electrical engineering, mechanical or civil engineering, they'll also accept degrees in product design, architecture. So what we're saying is there's nowhere in there in terms of the title that technology and design is mentioned, but the content of those degrees has been deemed at least 50% relevant to T&D. Also quantity surveyors, graphic interior designers, you can demonstrate some experience at a level of engineering. So there's that's the one subject because it's a very, very broad area where there will be a few exceptions to that rule. But by and large, if you want to apply to be a geography teacher or a home economics teacher, now you need a degree that is at least 50% relevant, and generally that will be in the title of, of that degree. Any queries or questions around the degrees or anything? You, know, you want to pop it in the chat? Maria will be there to answer. Okay, thank you. So again, just going over this again, what do I need to get onto a PGCE? A degree in a curriculum subject, saying I've mentioned some exceptions, that was the T&D. Experience working with young people and educational settings. So, you know, we do look for some type of experience that you have shown some type of an interest in working with young people. And, you know, sometimes that doesn't generally, we, ideally we want that to be in a school context, but sometimes we realize with your degree and your circumstances that can't happen. Um, so some evidence of having working with young people it could be youth club, it could be you know summer schemes, whatever it may be. Um, obviously, to enhance your profile and your employability for down the line, we're looking for some people who have got extra beyond the curriculum, uh, the capacity to teach the curriculum. That's where extracurricular activities come in, sport, music, drama, whatever it may be. It just adds to your profile. For entry to the PGCE, you need GCSE, maths, and English for post primary. But if you're applying for primary, you also need science. So for primary PGCE, you need GCSE, English, Maths and Science. For post-primary, you need Maths and English. You don't need GCSE Science. Okay. We also want to let you know that equivalent courses such as Essential Skills 2 are not acceptable because the General Teaching Council for Northern Ireland does not deem them acceptable and that's who you register with once you complete a postgraduate. So if you cannot register with them, you cannot teach in Northern Ireland. So we only accept GCSE grades C and above in maths and English for post-primary, GCSE maths English science grades C and above for primary. So again, going over it, English and maths, we're talking about post-primary here in particular, grade C. And what we mean by equivalent there now is not essential skills. We mean, for example, if you were applying from Republic of Ireland, for example, they have um, higher courses and ordinary courses. And it would need to be, there's levels there in terms of the level you can attain at either higher or ordinary level that equates to English and maths GCSE. That's what we're talking about in terms of equivalence. It's an honours degree. Okay, and in that honours degree, the honours degree at least needs to be a 2-2 or above. So if you apply with a third class honours, you will not be shortlisted. So the degree needs to be at least 2-2 or above. All applicants need to provide evidence of knowledge, interest and experience. We've talked about that. Two references to support. Generally, one's an academic reference from someone that's you know, lectured you or taught you and your undergraduate degree and then a character reference. We look for a medical certificate, we look for an access NI check that you are deemed suitable to work with children. So there's a criminal check in that. And then obviously the, the interview stage or the processes that we go through. So if you meet, meet all that, 
on the entry requirements and you have a good application, then you'll get through to the interview stage. Just giving you an example of T and D, but I'd be able to tell you that a, now the reason why I bring up T and D is because their their course actually lasts 42 weeks. They have started the current uh, cohort of technology and design started their course in mid July because they have a workshop to do. It's a competency workshop on safety where they would be using lots of machinery and tools, etc., and they must complete that before they start their PGCE. All right, so. They are on a 42-week course, whereas the rest of us are on rest of the subjects are on a 36-week course. So once the T and D students complete their six-week course over the summer, then everybody else follows the same program from then on. We start usually end of August, start of September with an induction and residential. Then you have eight weeks um, face to face teaching generally, and one of those weeks is in a primary placement. Then you go out to your uh, first school placement, which is non-grammar or secondary school placement, and that generally lasts from end of October to mid or late January, depending on how the weeks fall. Then you're back in university for five weeks face-to-face -face teaching, and then you're out on your second placement, which is generally in a grammar school or a post-16 school. Okay, That just gives you a breakdown, of, and you'll see that it's very intense uh, for the incoming cohort. We've been looking at planning, so they have lectures basically half nine to four monday tuesday wednesday and thursday and then most fridays at the start of the year they're in their first placement school which we call serial days so they go in for five fridays to see their school before they start their placement so that explains why you cannot do it on a part-time basis primary I'm just going through that again gcc passes grade c in english math and science an honors degree what we're identifying here for primary is that they have a priority for students with a 2-1, but students with a 2-2 are welcome to apply. I should emphasize that people with 2-2 do get on the course, but they may enhance the criteria for those with a 2-1. All right, you'll see for them, again, the degree must be appropriate to a primary education subject area, and the subjects are listed, math, science, geography, history, etc. Okay. So degrees that have at least 50% of study for a primary subject are accepted. For example, medicine has 50% science, but nursing doesn't. So if you came with a medical degree and you break that down, as you'd imagine in terms of you're thinking that's obvious, but it's important to highlight you have at least 50% science that would be deemed applicable, but nursing doesn't meet the 50%. Lately, some applicants have been accepted with degrees in medicine, engineering, architecture, and music technology. The music technology being linked to the music, architecture been linked to the art, they deemed the uh, content of at least 50% art and the engineering was science and as was the medicine. Okay. Again, knowledge interest with uh, children, medical certificate, the rest of that is, is the same as I explained for post-primary. It's just giving you an idea um, how close they're linked but subtle differences there in terms of the primary and post-primary. Teaching in Northern Ireland, so I talked about this earlier on in terms of the pay scale. So on the right there, that was last year, they haven't updated it, but from September past, that's what you'd start to, uh, start on. If you're in a teaching, you'd be starting in £24,137. You will see that goes up annually until you get up to M6, which is the end of your sixth year, you'd be in 35000 And then you have what's called upper pay, upper pay scales, and that's... UPS 1, UPS 2, and 3, and those are internal uh, assessed in schools where you move up through you know, a little bit of evidence to produce, but by and large, 99.9% .9 of teachers will make those grades. So at the top of your scale, the average teacher who's been teaching at least nine years, shall we say there, if we look at, will be in about 41,000. Okay. Now, for career development, if you were at that nine, 10 years and you're sitting in 41,000, but there's more scope for earning more, you have what's known as teacher allowance points. So you go through schools, if you had a head of department of a subject, head of year, maybe a Sanko, which is a special needs coordinator, the ICT coordinator, maybe a shared education link teacher, PR coordinator, someone who's responsible for public relations or a senior teacher. Now, just give you an example, I was a head of year in school, so 
if I was not 41, say, which was the equivalent back then, slightly less, then I was in two points to start with, which got me an extra four on top of that 41. So if someone's sitting on two points in school at the minute for a head of year, they'd be sitting on 45,000 roughly. Okay. Senior teachers in school. So we'll be either sitting on four points or five points. So you have some senior teachers in school. If you add that 13 on to the 41, who'd be sitting on about 54 and a half thousand on a senior teacher role. Okay. So it's giving you that there's more scope. Some people are very content to sit at the top of that scale of 41. They don't want any extra responsibility, but there's progression. And with that progression in career, rate, there, there is more money. Also, that's just giving you an idea of what maybe vice principals and principals will be on. You will see there, there's, they're into groups, and that grouping is according to the number of pupils in the school. So you'll see the range of spine points. For example, if you see group ones, L6 to L18, for example, group eights, L28 to L43. And those really, those numbers represent the size of school. So if you're the principal of a school with maybe 12, 1300 pupils, you'd be up in that group eight and you can see what you'd be getting there in terms of money. And some of those principles are up over 100,000. Okay, and your vice, vice principals, perhaps in schools of that, will be earning around that perhaps 70 to 80,000 bracket. Okay. Also, there are opportunities beyond teaching. Uh, just give you some of the examples there. Some people who are one of them maybe post-primary teaching have moved into the, the FE sector. Like ourselves uh, in the post-primary team, we taught in post-primary. I never really, to be honest, had any, never really thought about going into higher education or initial teacher education. It was just something that I did, having taught for a number of years in a post-primary school and decided to do my master's and saw an opportunity to do a little bit of lecturing and, and through a secondment, back to teaching and then jobs come up and that, so it wasn't something that I had set out to do. So on all of us, that are on the course really come through that pathway, having taught in school and looked to access some CPD and then saw that we were qualified and well, we thought suitable uh, for it. And, and that's how we ended up. So it wasn't as if when I started out teaching, I thought I wanted to get into HE. It just, it just happened through career progression. You'll also see some poster education manager, post primary assessment uh, through SIA, uh, digital learning technologist. So whilst, that PGC route, and as I said, and even in the BA route, you're into teaching, there are opportunities beyond teaching where those qualifications will be very, very useful, where they are actually looking for someone who's come out of that school context, okay? The course aim obviously is to prepare postgraduate students as effective classroom practitioners and delivery of the Northern Ireland curriculum. PGC at Ulster, so <clears> the <throat> important thing to remember is you will exit this course upon successful completion. You will exit with 60 credits. All right. So that's uh, 60 master's points, which is a third of a master's, which is why we encourage all our students who graduate from us. Now, they'll say to me, Paul, the last thing I want to see is another assignment. I don't want to be looking at another assignment. And I say, we don't want you to be looking at another assignment right away because it's important that you get enough experience under your belt before you would come back and do that master's and we recommend at least two years teaching before you would come back and do the master's but the beauty of it is you've a third of it done and i'd be saying to the students all you need to do and come back is do two more modules in a dissertation and you then have a master's in education some people intend to do it and we appreciate the stresses of life and other things that are going on at home and bits and pieces some people may not get around to it but at the minute when you exit a pgce you've got five years stroke six to cash in those points. So say you waited 15 years uh, before you did your master's, those points wouldn't count. So that's important to highlight. We say 37 weeks, but really it's a 36 week course and we give or take a few weeks for, for, for mopping things up. But in terms of formal, it's usually 36 weeks. It's continuous assessment. And again, it's a mixed methods uh, in terms of delivery, university teaching and school-based practice. All right. So the course structure, 12 weeks in the School of Education at Coleraine. And now that's broken up between first semester and second semester. Generally, you have about, so if I, when I, that one week observation in a primary school happens in first semester early on. So with that, you have about that week, 
plus about another seven weeks in the university, okay, which makes up the eight weeks of first semester, and then you have another five weeks in the second semester. So our incoming cohort will be starting now with us in early September, and that takes them right up to Halloween. Then they go off in their placement. They're back at the end of January. Then they're in with us for four weeks, five weeks actually because they get a prep week, and then they're out in their second placement, and they'll finish at the end of May. Okay, so that just gives you the breakdown there of the course. So you'll see really two thirds is spent in uh, schools. So a third spent between the university and two thirds spent in schools. And the beauty of that is you choose schools that are close to home. What we would say is that you're not allowed to choose a school that you attended as a pupil or a school where you have a relative that works in it. Okay or a school that you've already picked up experience and you've been in. It's because we want to try and broaden your experience and expose you to a broader range of experience that's going to help you in your career pathway. So um, that's just some information about that because some people will ask to go to the school they attended. But we do allow you to select those schools that are close to you, obviously, for convenience. So two thirds of it, you'd be living at home. Most people stay at home and travel anyway. We do have some students who maybe stay up during term time when they're in university, but they'll go back home for their school experience. All right. So module one, we talked about eight weeks in Korean. So induction, two, three day residential, one and a half weeks curriculum based learning, one week observation in a primary school, and then five weeks comprising of six hours a day. So we'll be starting with our bunch to start of September. We'll be doing a two now. It used to be a residential pre-COVID times. It was residential. This year we're not even going for residential. We're just going for two days of on-site outdoor activities. And our real focus there is on team building, building a bit of team spirit and togetherness because that's something you will need in the teaching profession. It's not a job you can do on your own. You will need a team of people around you, helping you, supporting you. And that's something we try and generate in this course from the get-go in that we try and get every subject, all the subjects mixing with each other and respecting and appreciating the importance of each subject, because everybody enters a PGCE thinking their subject is the most important. And that's good, that they have faith and confidence in their subject. But we spend an awful lot of time in generating and developing those relationships with staff and students. And the feedback on that has been really positive, not just from um, students, but also from external examiners. We do then one and a half weeks curriculum-based learning where we're looking at the Northern Ireland curriculum in the context of the broader aspects and in our subject. They go out to primary schools for one week, and that's to really look at the transition where are primary school pupils? So where are these year eight pupils that start, where are they coming from? What's it been like for them? What's the difference between primary and secondary? And whilst you and I know the major differences, when you're on a PGC course, you're looking at that in a subtle context in terms of the differences moving from that small context to that, that larger context. And then, as I say, we have five weeks of real intense teaching of uh, your five weeks comprising six hours a day, Monday to Thursday, and then your Friday is generally in your placement school. Module two, 12 weeks in secondary schools, teaching practice, <clears throat> supervised by a work-based mentor and supported by your PGC tutor. The mentor is someone in school, a teacher who takes responsibility for you in school, generally a head of department. Doesn't always be a head of department, but in most cases, the head of department will take on that role, just basically looking after you, helping you with your planning, your assessment, any issues or difficulties. And we as tutors will liaise with that person and you constantly throughout that placement. And you teach 50% of a normal teaching timetable. So if you take a teacher's timetable that does have free classes, you will take 50% of that timetable. We expect participation in an extracurricular program. And your assessment really a teaching practice file with all your lesson plans and your resources. And tutor observations, that's where we come out and observe you, what you teach. Generally, you get two observations in this first placement, and you'll get two observations in your second placement. If you're observed and we felt the lesson just wasn't up to scratch, you will get a follow-up observation. You'll also receive observations by internal staff. So the mentor will carry out some observations as well. Okay. So again, module three, we talked about that five weeks university base, preparation for grammar school placements. During this, we, we tend to cover a lot of the real theory in that first semester, and we tend to go into the more broader aspects of school context. So we're, we're looking a lot in relationships and sexuality, we are looking a lot at shared education, we give opportunities to students for, to pick up sports coaching awards, 
sort of foundation level coaching to help you with your applications uh, when you're applying for jobs in terms of that extracurricular front. We look at developing first aid because that's a very, very important aspect now in schools. In fact, we had a past student who was tailor-made for a job, did teaching practice in that school, thought, created a really good impression, turns out couldn't apply for the job because they didn't have a first aid certificate. That was a number of years back and that forced us to bring this in to the course. We said that would never happen again. It was unusual for it to be an essential uh, part of the essential criteria, but it was there and it made us change. So now we offer those things as well. You'll also during that time, you'll get help with interview preparation, uh, applications, all of that that's preparing you because jobs will start appearing. You, that five weeks is the end of January and all of February. From the start of March, April, that's when jobs start appearing and people start to get anxious and excited about applying for these jobs and we will be there to help with that as well. Module four is the 12 weeks in the grammar school. Again, same thing, 50% of a timetable, extracurricular, it's the same way of assessing you. You will do in this module a professional development project, which is a large scale project, 6,000 words. And that is really where you look at an element of the curriculum that you feel you need to develop or something in your own practice that you want to get better at. It could be behavior management, it could be ICT, it could be assessment, and you will conduct um, a professional development project on that uh, 6,000 words or equivalents. And part of that will be individual presentations, there'll be a lit review, there'll be a personal reflection. There will be an option for people to undertake an SEN placement, which is a special educational needs placement during the last three weeks of this placement. So if you were opting for the SEN placement, you would do nine weeks in the grammar school, and then you'd go off to the special school and do three weeks there. All right. And we offer that just to, because there's no such thing as a PGC and SEN, but lots of people who teach in the SEN setting have come from BA ed courses or PGCE. So we want to ex give people the experience. And while some people may never teach in an SEN context, it's very valuable in terms of the tips, in terms of behavior management, in terms of that whole pastoral side of things, and also being able to differentiate the curriculum and meet the needs of all learners. They pick up fabulous learning experiences in there. But then there are a few over the years who have said to me, Paul, this is the place for me. I love teaching, but I love at the SEN environment. And they have continued, the school have offered them a job, or they've stayed in that sector and still continue to do so. There was a job, came up, PE job there recently, one of my graduates, and I contacted him, I said, did you see the job in such in a school? And he says, I did, he says, but no, I'm not gonna go for it. I love him, and he's in a, an SEN school. So it's just people who are cut out for it, and made for it, but been exposed to that experience, you'll, you'll not know. The biggest majority of people come out of it and say, I loved it, it was great, I learned a lot from it, but it's not for me. And that's fine, but it's given people that chance. Okay, and we will have visits from external examiners then who generally come from across from England, Scotland, Wales, and they will observe people teach and look at assignments. Travel and accommodation, so look, Obviously, I think things we are allowed to car share at the minute. I think that's correct. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Maria. But I think we're allowed to car share uh, at the minute, the way things have relaxed to COVID. But a lot of ones will take the train up. Daily return of £19. Some students for this year have been asking me about guest houses. So the thing is, if you look at it, say in your those five week block of teaching that we talk about that real intense week, you could stay on Monday night, a Tuesday night, and a Wednesday night and you can go home on Thursday because generally you're going to be in your placement school on a, on a Friday. So three nights will do you. So therefore, you don't want to be getting tied into six month contracts in the year because the nature of this course doesn't allow that. So there are lots of B&B guest houses here in the port and the coal rain area. And a lot of them who know the nature of the courses here and they will, you can pay per night or even per week, okay? Some decide, I'm from Newry, I'm from Enniskillen. I want to stay up around the north coast. And they decide to do stay up here. They get a they book and they rent, maybe two hundred pounds a month, whatever it may be, and they decide to stay the whole year. So they'll actually do their teaching practice in neighboring schools up here in this area, as opposed to going back home. But the biggest majority do go back home. 
interview preparation. So if you're preparing, we talked about the application form. You know, it's important that that's accurate. And if you have any problems, contact admissions or myself. Or if you know the course that you're applying for, so if it's home economics that you're applying for and it's Mariad, you can email the course director. You'll find their details or details on the on the on the website, and we will help you as best we can. It's too late when the form comes in, and then you're rejected for something, and you say you didn't know. Ask early, and do not be afraid to ask. We will hear. We would rather help you get a good application form in and be able to consider your application as opposed to having to dismiss it for something perhaps maybe relatively small. So, if you get through that application stage reading through the Northern Ireland curriculum, become an au fait with the Northern Ireland curriculum. It's amazing, actually. You generally always have a question in the curriculum. Or it may not say Northern Ireland curriculum, but it'll be hidden in there somewhere. They're expecting you to have some knowledge. And it really would be the first thing you would think that you would be doing in preparation for an interview would be to look at the curriculum, particularly for people who are maybe um, from the Republic of Ireland or, or outside of Northern Ireland who didn't study Northern Ireland curriculum or are not familiar. You need to be familiarizing yourself with the curriculum at Key Stage 3 and Key Stage 4. Read, we've been okay with education articles, but not, you know, we don't expect you to begin off and reading loads of journal articles, things like that. It's just maybe be okay with what's current <clears throat> in terms of education, and generally you should be getting that through the news. Um, any circulars that are going on, we don't, again, we're not expecting you to go in and, and start searching, but maybe go on to the DE website, the Department of Education website, and seeing what's new there in terms of their circulars and advice to schools. Lots of will concentrate and focus on, on COVID at the minute. But I mean, we're in terms of the COVID, we'll not be asking you anything specific uh, to that. It'll be more one of the main circulars and the main change that have been taking place. So having some clear thoughts on a range of teaching issues, what about your subject that you're applying to teach? You want to be a history teacher for 40 years. All right, why is it important? Why do you think history is important? Why is PE important? Why is geography important? So whatever the subject is, be ready. I mean, the old basic one, why do you want to become a teacher? You know, and please don't tell us because my, <clears throat> my aunt's a teacher or, or whatever. And sometimes those traditional and family ties that maybe you've witnessed, maybe you see the satisfaction and joy that they get, but you need to be giving us a little bit more. All right? And then thinking about what makes a good classroom, whatever the subject teacher is. And as I said at the start of this, thinking back to that teacher that was a positive influence on you, the teacher that you would want to model yourself on, if you could be that same teacher, what qualities do they have? Do you have them? And don't always be coming to an interview expecting things to be perfect. You know, it's easy to say, I'm organized, I'm punctual, I'm this, I'm that. Giving us some examples of how you've been those things in life is even better. It's easy to rhyme things off. But given examples of your experience and drawing on any experience you have will will make those answers much better. Other courses <clears throat> that we have, some people who don't perhaps get on the PGCE will will offer for the they'll have a we'll invite them maybe to apply for the TESOL course, which is teaching English to speakers of other languages. Some people who've went on and completed the TESOL course in master's level and then have came back and applied for PGCE and got on it. We also have a course on library and information management at master's level. So this is just general in terms of COVID. We are, the university have been extremely uh, supportive uh, of staff and students during the course of the pandemic and they continue to do so. And we really hope that, which we're planning for this year, but, but this starting September at the minute, the guidance the university are going on is coming from the Northern Ireland Executive, and I'm sure some of you have read that, that they're hoping for a full return to campus. And obviously we're keeping an eye, and the university is keeping an eye on the ongoing public health information and the way things are going with COVID. But at the minute, we were planning for a full return, and there are contingency plans in place should things change. Okay, so you keep an eye, if you're interested yourself, uh, keep an eye on the updates by visiting ulster.ac.uk forward slash coronavirus. Any questions? Alison, Penny, Rachel, any questions there? No, no questions. 
Anything to add, Maria? No. No. Nope. Just covered everything. Okay. Okay, folks, if there's no questions you don't want to ask, even you want to drop something into the chat, you know, we're quite happy uh, to do that now. If not, don't worry. We hope that you have found that helpful. If uh, you go off this and you think, I should have asked that, or you maybe don't want to ask at the minute, um, please contact me. There's my email address, p.mcflynn at ulster.ac.uk. I would be more than happy to answer any queries or concerns or give any advice that you may have on this. I want to thank you for taking the time to join in and listen. We hope you've got something out of it. And as I say, please contact us. Even if it's something really, really small, we're, we'll always be here and we'll get back to you as soon as possible and answer it. Okay.